Okay, I believe I'm live. Good afternoon, my name is Austin Park, and I'm presenting my lighting presentation on Nexlatol, also known as Bempedoic Acid, the newly approved by the FDA cholesterol-lowering agent. What is Nexlatol? Nexlatol is the brand name for Bempedoic Acid. It was produced by Aspirion Therapeutics Incorporated by Roger S. Newton. Some of you may be familiar with that name, but I'm sure many of you are more familiar with a drug that he has helped co-found, which I'll reveal in just a moment. Nexotol is a cholesterol-lowering agent in a new way, new mechanism. It utilizes the ACL, adenosine triphosphate citrate lyase enzyme, uh, inhibits that to prevent cholesterol synthesis. It was produced for adjunct therapy. It's supposed to be in addition to maximum tolerated cholesterol therapy. The FDA approved it in two classes, whether a patient can tolerate statins once they hit the maximum uh, therapy dose for statins, they would have an adjunct with Nexotol. However, a patient cannot tolerate statins, then ezetimibe would be another option. Quick background on Dr. S. Newton. He helped co-found Atorvastatin, one of Pfizer's best-selling drugs and one of the most prescribed cholesterol medications uh, in around the world. Uh, in 2008, he helped develop Bempedoic Acid, and he's been working with it since, and it was finally approved 12 years later in February of 2020. Now, the mechanism of action of Bempedoic Acid is it utilizes ACL and inhibits ACL, and it lowers the low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, LDLC, by inhibiting cholesterol synthesis in the liver. Uh, below that are some active metabolites. If you'd like to pause the video and read through it, but I'm just going to run through some visuals that I have here. As a review of statin mechanism of actions, here's a picture of the liver. So on the right side, you have uh, your dietary intake of cholesterol and glucose, which gets converted into acetyl-CoA. Through synth HMG-CoA synthase, you create HMG-CoA, and then statin therapy, uh, works right in this step between HMG-CoA and the reductase inhibition to prevent mevalonic acid to be synthesized, which is a precursor to cholesterol esters. And with that, with triglycerides, create the VLDLs, which ultimately become LDLs. Now, uh, any cell with a mitochondria has a Krebs cycle to create energy. So acetyl-CoA here, uh, this is where bempedoic acid comes into play. Uh, through that enzyme, acetyl-CoA turns into citrate, and it gets converted back from citrate into acetyl-CoA. And then that was like the first step to creating the HMG-CoA, working on that pathway. So this kind of works a bit ahead of time of statins, which gives us a, that adjunct therapy. So here's an adjunct visual. So as citrate comes in, you have the mepidoic acid preventing uh, the synthesis of acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA goes on the road, and the statins would stop the HMG-CoA being uh, reduced into mevalonic acid, which creates ultimately cholesterol, the LDLs that we don't want. Here's a quick video kind of just comparing the two. Like statins, pepidoic acid works by blocking a key enzyme used by the body to make cholesterol. But unlike statins, it cannot accumulate in muscle, reducing the likelihood of muscle pain. So that was just like a benefit if a patient you know, as having rhabdomyolysis, having the pain in the muscles, if they have to be switched to ezetimibe, methadoic acid would be a good adjunct therapy for those types of patients. So the indication are for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, as well as heterozygous familiar hypocholesteremia. Other differences that atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease are more so based on lifestyle factors and, you know, having a buildup of plaque and excess fat, narrowing those arteries through, you know, smoking, high, having high blood pressure, diabetes, um, being overweight, lack of exercise. Um, and then the other one, heterozygous familial hypercholesteremia, is more of a genetic predisposition of having uh, premature atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Uh, it affects one, 100, one in 500 Caucasians. And it's just like a, uh, has, gives you the greater probability of having raised LDLC levels and total cholesterol. Now, clinical trial data was from a phase three randomized control study. They looked at 3,600 patients and had a method of two to one bempedoic acid to placebo. Uh, the results were that 80% of LDLC lowering when adjunct therapy with maximum tolerance therapy. And then for patients that cannot tolerate statins, they saw 24% lowering of LDLC. And they saw the significant lowering of LDLC compared at the 12 week mark. There are some side effects with this medication, which I'll run through in a little bit here. Some of those are nasal pharyngitis, myalgia, UTI, and the bigger one is the uric acid accumulation, since it uses a different pathway. Drug information, the indication is for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and heterozygous familiar hypercholesteremia. 
Uh, it's adjunct therapy. It is not supposed to be used as monotherapy and can be used in both statins and ezetimibes at their maximum tolerated doses. Uh, the dose of Nexitol is 180 milligrams by mouth daily. And at this time, there are no adjustments for renal or, renal or hepatic issues or dysfunction. And it can be taken with or without food. So as pharmacists, we have to counsel our patients on using this medication. So it's important to tell them and let them know that it's supposed to be adjunct therapy. And some side effects may be unwanted. Uh, hyperuricemia with this, so if patients are reporting some issues with gout, uh, this may not be the best agent for them. Uh, very rare cases of tendon rupture. Then some people experience cold and flex symptoms, having back pain and muscle spasms. And currently, right now, uh, Espiron Therapeutics are undergoing clinical trials to see whether or not Nexitol adjunct therapy does provide cardiovascular benefit. So with that, it's kind of exciting to see new medications and new classes and new mechanisms coming out to you know, better our everyday medication utilization to become healthier. Uh, here's some of the references. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, you can email me or message me at austin.park at drake.edu. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.